Hello, people. <laughs> Again, feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. So you're taking a trip with the trailer, but maybe you didn't allow enough time <clears throat> or just don't want to have the hassle of taking it in the shop to have it checked out. But you do want to have a little peace of mind. So you got kind of got that on the back of your mind. You know, what can I do? I don't want to commit to a big service repair if I really don't need it. I've had them, maybe you had them serviced a couple years ago, year ago. But you got this big trip ahead of you and those wheel bearings are on your mind. So I'm going to show you what to do. And I'll walk you through it first what we're going to do and then I'm actually going to show you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jack the trailer up off the ground and you'll see me doing this. You're going to grab the wheel and you're going to do two, two tests. The first test is side to side. When you rock it, or is there any movement? And then the second test is you're going to roll it. Is it smooth or do you hear any kind of growling? If you hear any kind of growling, any heavy, you're, you're committed then. You're going to have to replace the bearings. There's no way around it. If it sounds smooth, you know you're in good shape. Maybe it sounds smooth, but you grab the wheel and there's a little play. See, this is what can really save you because you're catching it early. If you go ahead and run it, even though it's smooth, it's two tapered needle bearings in there and they require preload to carry the weight correctly. It's like two cones going together. So if you catch it early, you can save yourself. It's smooth, but you got that play. Now, if you went on your trip anyhow, even though you had that play, there's a good chance this thing's going to come apart on you. So what you're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it, is you're going to take that grease cap off, and you're either going to unfold the locking tab of the spindle nut, or you're going to remove the cotter pin. And what you're going to do is you're going to take up on that. You're going to, you're going to tighten it to get that play out. See, what happens is they probably were perfect when it was first assembled, but those bearings wear in, and then that's where that play comes in. So you have to make up for the play of those tapered roller bearings and seats. And that's usually what happens. <clears throat> People let them go, and then they come apart on you. So stick with me. We're going to get our hands dirty and get into this thing. Again, feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so what we're looking at here is I've got a actually a new Magic Tilt trailer that I've got in inventory. I just <laughs> pulled it up on its side for ease of filming and just going to kind of run you guys through this. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go ahead and rotate it, check it out, see if it's smooth, see if there's any wobble. <clears throat> I'm going to take my big hammer rock this cap back and forth. Hopefully not smash my fingers. Get that out of the way. And they actually use a it's a large pin instead of a cotter pin. It's just rolled up on each edge. In other words, it's not a, a regular cotter pin, so it's really stiff. So I'm trying to rock rock it down a little bit. And you can see the the cutters actually bite into it really nice. Get some leverage there. Then I'm going to just back the castle nut off a little bit, kind of simulate something you might see. You may jack it up and see a little wobble. But as long as there's no water in there and the bearings are nice and smooth, you can do this service and you'll be up and running. So my hand tighten it. Then I'm going to get my pliers on it and put a little preload on there. This is nice and smooth. Got a little preload. And you can stick the tip of the cotter pin in one of the recesses in the castle nut too while you do that. That way it's easier to locate the hole to index it. But I've got a pretty good idea where it is. And I'm getting my cotter pin ready. And I actually bent my cotter pin a little bit before I put it in there. Put like a little crescent into it. That way when it comes all the way through it doesn't run into the edge of the hub. And 
right here is where I should be using a pair of needle nose pliers. You can just rack that over in one shot. But what I'm trying to do is get it tucked in there nice and clean so that it doesn't interfere or rub on the dust cap that's going to go on next because the cap's going to spin with the hub and you don't want any interference. Now here's a trick. Take your dust cap and take it to the hardware store and match it up with a piece of water pipe. I believe that's two inch. And it makes the best installation tool because it catches that edge right there. And it just drives it so nice. Nice and even like it was made for it. Without this you are going to ruin some dust caps. So that's a great tip right there. Hit your grease fitting.